the saints go marching in, oh when the saints go marching in, oh how I want to be with St. Kilda, when the saints go marching in. Before we start, we do have lots of seats up here and some there. If you would like to come forward, I'm sure the family would be really happy if, if you came forward and to be seated. He never looked for praises, he was never one to boast. He just went on quietly working for the ones he loved the most. His dreams were seldom spoken, his wants were very few, and most of the time his worries went unspoken too. He was there, a firm foundation through all our storms of life, a sturdy hand to hold on to in times of stress and strife. A true friend we could turn to when times were good or bad, one of our greatest blessings, the man that we call Dad. I speak of Derek Royce Howard. I know in the time that Derek has been on this earth, he's touched the lives of many people, and he's certainly touched the lives of you who are here today. I warmly welcome you as we gather to honour and indeed celebrate Derek's life, your presence here today is greatly appreciated. I would also like to welcome and thank those who are joining us by live stream. Welcome. My name is Delma Carpenter and along with Brendan and his colleagues from Parkside Funerals, we feel very privileged to have been asked to conduct this service for you. And just as a reminder, if you haven't done so already now, is a good time to turn your mobile phones onto silent. Earlier this week when I met with Derek's family I asked them how would Derek like to be remembered and they said they think he would like to be remembered as being comical, 
hard-working, an honest man whose family meant everything to him. For those of you who knew Derek, you would know that he had a dry sense of humour and was witty with his quick comebacks and often catching you out. Despite his cheeky side and his dad jokes, Derek was kind and generous and would help anyone out if he could. Monique and Luke said their dad was a good role model. He had an incredible work ethic and instilled in them not to be lazy and never do drugs. <laughs> There's a few laughs there, yes. <laughs> they said he was the perfectionist, very set in his ways and was never happy until things, things had to be done. They're sure he held off until the bathroom was finished before he left our world. Derek knew everyone. He was an outgoing person, enjoyed being with and talking to people. He was a loyal mate to many and the one they could turn to in times of need or just to have a talk. Derek was many things to many people, but most importantly, he was a family man and a proud, loving father of Monique and Luke. He was over the moon when grandchildren Lacey and Archer arrived. They were his world. He loved spending time with them, and when they were around him, Poppy, well, he was a kid again. They made him feel young. Being one of 11 children, Derek was very close to his mum, Dawn, and his siblings. He regularly had long phone calls with his brother, Ivan. His sister, Andrea, lovingly cared and supported Derek during the last few weeks of his life. Derek looked forward to his family, the Howard family, get-togethers, and these were rather noisy occasions with lots of fun, jokes and laughter. Derek sadly left our world on Wednesday the 21st of December 2022, and since that day I'm sure you've all spent moments thinking about him and reflecting on your memories. Today we acknowledge and share the deep feelings of loss and grief that are present for Derek's passing. We hold him in our hearts and dear in our memories. We are grateful that he lived and walked in our world. And although there is sadness in our hearts at losing him, we can feel happy for the moments that brought us joy, made us laugh or smile. I'd like to invite Derek's brother Ivan to come forward, and along with Peter Conlon, he's go they're going to present eulogy, but I think Ivan's going to come third for, I, I'm getting tongue tied here, Ivan, <laughs> first. Mm. Firstly, I'd like to thank you all for coming here today on behalf of my family, my mum, my brothers and my sisters, and uh, oh, to get through this. My little brother, I miss him so much. My name is Ivan, and I am the oldest boy in the Howard clan. Whenever I think of Deck, I remember his his little curls, what he had when he was little. We, Derek and I had a great connection over the years. Even though my gypsy ways took me away from Tasmania, Deck and I would catch up by phone often, talk great with great ease about everything. Deck had a couple of characteristic sayings. Whenever I'd ring Deck, I'd say, how are you going, mate? And he'd say, oh, fair to meddle <laughs> typical deck. The other was expressed during card games when us kids would set him up next to a certain person and it seemed to deck that that certain person would always play a card that wasn't a good outcome for deck. And deck's outcome, <laughs> his saying would be, fuck, you know.
as kids, we'd be teasing him that he was a golden-haired child. As I look back and remember the life we had, some special moments linger in my memory. <laughs> when, it, <clears throat> when we were young, it seemed like Deck was the golden-haired child. It, it is a long-running joke with us kids that Deck got a wagon wheel from Mum. No matter how good we were, we didn't get one. <laughs> when, when Deck was being stirred about it by us getting a wagon wheel from Mummy, a big smile had come across his face and he'd pat himself on the head and say, yeah, but I was a good little boy. <laughs> and you can see Deck's humour there. Uh, also, it was a time when I came home from Sydney and uh, I was a cocktail barman in Sydney and I made, made the family a few cocktails. And I remember one night we made cocktails and mum said, Ivan, Derek can't have that drink. He's got to go to work the next morning. So she scrapped the cocktail and scalded herself. <laughs> And we are all stunned because mum doesn't drink. <laughs> Deck the golden haired child. As kids, Deck and I, would, I, we worked together on many projects. The earliest day, it was out the back in the paddock, our garden. <clears throat> We decided to build a greenhouse, so we scavenged around the mill yard for timber, because um, the sawmill was across the road, so it was a convenient place for us. And uh, many a lettuce and tomato was harvested from that greenhouse. We were so proud of ourselves. When I think, think back, I don't know how us kids really survived, because we got up to some things. I remember when I started started work as a young fella. I, had a, I got, bought a motorbike and being kids, I tied a piece of rope <coughs> to Derek's push bike and towed him up Zigzag Road. <laughs> now if you all know Zigzag Road, it's a pretty st deck burned his brakes out trying to stop. <laughs> I said, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm trying to stop. <laughs> anyway. More recent times, one of our amazing experiences we shared in more, in, was trip to trip to Ireland for our nephew's wedding. So Deck and I decided to combine going to the wedding with a extend the trip and go to Dubai, and also add in a trip around the UK as a bus trip. It was such a good time. One of the funniest things that happened was after a very good night at a theatre restaurant in, in a castle at Scotland. Yeah, this goes back on me. I got a little bit tipsy and apparently wouldn't stop talking when we got back to the unit. Uh, anyway, I thought, oh, I need to go to the loo. So I went out got up, walked out the door, and I, I can just come straight out of my head with this. I got up, walked out the door, closed the door, and all of a sudden, I was in the hallway of the, in my jocks. <laughs> I can tell you now, I sobered up, really, sobered up really quickly. And I thought, how am I gonna get back in? So I'm on the door, Derek. Derek, as quiet as I could because I didn't want to get anybody else to come out. And I'm going, Derek, and he still wouldn't answer. So I'm thinking, oh God, I'm going to have to go down to reception in my jocks to get, to get back into the room. He finally let me back in, but he later on told me, he said, I could hear you knocking. <laughs> he, he said, I'm in there laughing. He, could, <laughs> he said, but if I let him back in, he's going to start bloody talking again. <laughs> 
that was my brother Dick. Uh, okay, and then we finally got back on the bus trip to London and who knows Dick will know this, you'll see him. We got back to London, they took us to Buckingham Palace and when, we, when the bus arrived there, it was pouring down rain and I didn't have a really good raincoat. Deck did, he had a Japara, so he had fully covered and I said, Deck, can you take my camera and take a few shots of Buckingham Palace for me? He said, yeah, of course I can. Anyway, he did, we the, about half the bus stayed on, people stayed on the bus and he got back and he handed me the camera and we sat down talking and I said, he said, how'd it go? He said, yeah, good. And I opened the, turned the camera on, opened it up, and this is the photo of Buckingham Palace I got. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you know Deck, that's Deck's humour. <laughs> <laughs> so loved that boy. <laughs> so many good laughs on that trip, so many good memories. And uh, it's the most recent times which really stick with me. Earlier this year, Deck, Luke and myself went on a trip to Deck's beloved Stumpet Bay. It was such a magic time. We had a week there of quality times, recalling old times. A few drinks and a few card games which Luke can't play real good. <laughs> He can, but he lost. <laughs> and it was such a great week. And to complete the year, in October, we came home for our sister's play. And Del and myself spent two weeks at Deck's place, helping Deck around the house. And playing board games, enjoying some one-on-one -on -one time and talking about life. It was such, such a good time. I just finish up with uh, Odek. Even though you were my little brother, you spent more time kicking my ass than I did yours. You were the stable, grounded thinker, a loyal, caring and decent human being. I will miss your quick wit and sense of humour. From all this, mate, all this pain I have learnt to enjoy each moment of every day and not linger on the small stuff. And I think we all have to take something out of this. Thank you, Deck. You'll always be in my heart. Thank you. Beautiful words, Ive. Derek Royce Howard, what a ripper. I met Derek about 40 years ago when my wife Bron got a few of us to go and play badminton at the old Sulphur Creek Hall. Derek was the reigning club champion, champion but didn't play that season, I think due to the birth of Monique. Without Derek, I was lucky enough to win the club championship. I, I sat next to Deke at the annual dinner and he told me how he'd won the past three championships there and his prize was always a lousy sponge bag. The look in his face when I was presented with a nice big shiny engraved trophy <laughs> said it all. He was not happy. The next year he was back playing and a lot of you will know how competitive Derek was. When playing with him, in the club championships, not against him, with him. I, he virtually broke my nose. He came back for smash and went, smash. Next game, he did the same to Glen Vernon. Needless to say, Derek won the championships. Then at the annual dinner, when he went up to get his trophy, you guessed it, 
a nice new sponge bag. <laughs> he was not happy. <laughs> Our friendship grew from there. We both had a love of sport, our families and similar values. I would like to say our work ethics were the same, but I've never seen anyone with Derek's work ethic. Well, he was a goer. I remember that first house they had in Thorn Street, moving piles of dirt, digging out from underneath to make that room. He had a bobcat for a while, but a lot of it was shovel and wheelbarrow, every night. Then the farm at Stowport, moving all those rocks. Monique and Luke and Bev can tell you the nights they spent out there under torchlight, I reckon, moving, moving rocks for months and months. Then at West Morville, the same. Derek never stopped. He worked six, ten or twelve hours at work, then came home and worked until after dark. If you ever wanted a hand, Derek was the first one there and the first one you'd want to help. There was no mucking around with Derek. Head, up, head down, bum up and into it. He was highly thought of and respected by his workmates at Tasrail. Just days before he passed, Hank and the CEO, I think he was from Hobart, made a special trip up to see him at his home. He was really chuffed with that. Derek often wrongly said that he wasn't all that clever. But Derek was one of the cleverest guys I've known. He could work out how to do most things and then bang, get it done. I remember about two years ago, I had a big rhododendron out the front of my place that I needed to move into my backyard. I spent two days painstakingly removing dirt. It was in a really awkward position and delicately cutting around all the roots so I didn't do too much damage. Derek arrived on the evening of the second day. He took one look, went to his car, got his pick, smashed it and had it out in three minutes. That was yet another of Derek's skills. He just knew how to do stuff. I still maintain I did the heavy bits though, so. Derek was generous to a T, always the first to help anyone out, out and doing things for people. But typical Derek, he was always reluctant to ask for help for himself. Whether it was a chainsaw at Zach's shack, cleaning the block at Monique's, concreting at Luke's, gardening at Cole's, rotary hoeing at Brady's, or pole sawing at home, Derek was always helping. In the last six months of his life, even though his health was failing, he was still working too hard, mainly at home, chopping up trees and gardening when we all encouraged him to rest. But that was just not Derek's way. Derek loved to trip, whether it be local, mainland or overseas, he loved to travel and explore. There weren't many places in Tassie that Derek hadn't driven or walked. He loved being outdoors, exploring waterfalls and loved the back roads. I remember we had a visitor from the UK and I enlisted Derek as our tour guide. We drove up old dirt roads that I didn't know existed followed log trucks for miles, I had no idea where I was, and we ended up at Boat Harbour. Incidentally, in the middle of winter, nude bathers on both sides of us, so I think he, he knew what was going on there before we left. There were lots of footy trips, concerts and holidays. Derek often talked about his trip to the UK for his nephew's wedding, that being a highlight, and his trip round the UK with Ivan. He visited family all over Australia, and was only recently back from spending time in New South Wales with his sister Wendy, where he also caught up with Julie. They did many miles exploring the countryside, including, camera, including Canberra. Derek had another overseas trip with Colin, Sonia and Jordo in June next year, but unfortunately, obviously, won't be going. In 2018, Derek decided to go on a trip through the middle of Australia, across the top and down the Western Australian coast. I was lucky enough to join him in Perth. We had a few days there and went to a footy match at Optus Stadium. Then we did the southwest of Western Australia, Kalgoorlie, across the Nullarbor and to Melbourne. We had a great couple of weeks together. Camping, going on walks, 
visiting pubs, mostly dodgy ones, fishing, of course, staying in motels, all dodgy ones, but most of all, just having a great time together. A couple of mornings, I even got big old Derek to put moisturiser on, because she was pretty warm over there. He did spare me to secrecy about that, but it's out. Footy trips to Melbourne and the Gold Coast were always fun. Except St Kilda had a bad habit of beating my side Richmond. I reckon we went to about 10 Richmond St Kilda games, even when Richmond were good sides, and St Kilda won eight of them. In fact, the last one we went to, St Kilda, were 94 points up at half time. I really wanted to leave, but I knew Deke, Deke just wouldn't let me forget that. So I had to sit through the last half with Deke having that sneaky smirk on his face all the way through it. Uh, but I did have the last laugh because Richmond won the Premiership about 12 weeks later. Derek and I could argue for hours about sporting facts. Whether Bartlett or Harvey had the most brown low votes. Whether handball was the national sport of Denmark, it didn't matter for us, we just loved the banter. The worst thing ever invented was Google. That Caddo arguments from two hours down to about ten minutes when Deke would simply look up the answer and say, sorry Pierre, you're wrong again. <laughs> Derek loved nothing better than taking the caravan down to Stumpy's Bay where he'd settle in for four or five days and fish to his heart's content. Derek was a great fisherman, although at times Pretty impatient, he showed great control with a few of us that struggled to launch those big heavy sinkers and weights into the deep water. Graham especially was just bloody hopeless. <laughs> it's amazing he didn't do himself or others serious damage. Needless to say, old Deke would end up casting his line out for him. The community at Stumpy's will certainly miss his company and his fishing expertise. We all spent many enjoyable days down there, fishing, going for a drive, or just sitting around the campfire having a natter. Derek loved spending time with his mates, and we had many enjoyable get-togethers. The last few years, our morning walks with Hazzy, Cole, Derek, myself, followed by a coffee, had been great fun and relaxing times. Derek usually stirred the pot to fire the rest of us up. He was a master of lighting the fire that got other, others arguing, then he'd just walk along with that big smirk on his face. Derek's one-liners were legendary. He was quick-witted and always ready with a, dead, a dumb dad joke. He and Bron would sit there laughing away while I just shook my head. He was also always keen to catch up on the lo local gossip too but he was adamant that they were just exchanging information. <laughs> Derek lost his great mate Yanni just on 10 years ago, and I know they'd be up there now enjoying a VB and a Fosters together. If you look up the meaning of loyal in the dictionary, it should have Derek Howard's name next to it. Derek was a great son, father, brother, an exceptional friend. Always first to ask how you were doing and lend an ear. In his last few weeks at hospital and at home, he never complained. Always thought he didn't want to be a bother. He had every right to be angry. He had worked so hard and had given so much and now he couldn't enjoy a few years of healthy retirement. Derek's family was so precious to him. He was devoted to his kids, Monique and Luke and their families, and loved them immensely. He was so proud of their successes and achievements, but most importantly, just the sensational, sincere and caring people they have grown to be. He adored his lovely mum Dawn and all his brothers and sisters. He visited those on the mainland a few times and was always keeping me up to date with their movements. Derek was only 62, but packed a lot into those years. His legacy is his beautiful children, Monique and Luke, and his grandchildren, Lacey and Archer. They can all be so proud of their dad. 
Derek was a beauty. Hard-working, committed, funny, loyal, sincere. A great father, son, brother and poppy. And to the rest of us, just a really great friend. Here's to you, Deke, a sensational bloke who will be sadly missed. Thank you, Peter, and thank you, Ivan. I'd now like to invite Monique and Luke to come forward, and they're going to share some memories of their dad with us. hard to believe that you have gone, Dad. It feels like you've just gone on another holiday and we're waiting for you to come home. I love you and always will, Dad. You're the one person... ..who I could always look up to and sought guidance from. And to me, you were the perfect person and the most loving Dad. I feel really lucky to have been your daughter. Because I always felt so loved and supported by you no matter what. And not only did you teach us about integrity of character, but you were fun and you would always take us on adventures and holidays and teach us how to laugh at ourselves. And you always gave us first class teachings in dad jokes. It was so beautiful to see you become a poppy and I saw a new happiness and a new joy grow out of you in sharing your love with Lacey and Archer and I knew that you were going to be the most wonderful poppy and I had looked forward to all the adventures you would have with them. Just as you did as a dad to Luke and I. I loved seeing how you adored Lacey and regarded Archer as Poppy's little mate. And Lacey and Archer absolutely loved you and will try to go on and live like you would have wanted us to. I miss you immensely and will always love you. Dad, I'm incredibly privileged to be your son. You gave me an upbringing filled with many amazing experiences. From the fishing trips up the lakes, going to Melbourne to watch the footy, teaching me to drive on the farm, coaching me in high school, coaching the high school football team, and so much more. I, and I'm sure many others will remember you as a social man who loves fishing, a bit of an adventure, a beer at the footy and a sense of humour that resulted in many puns and dad jokes. However, the first thing, uh, the first thing I think I've ever asked to describe my dad is, in, is he's an old school, hard working man. If something needed doing, it would never be put off, he would get in and get it done. He was an incredible family man and you could see how much his eyes were filled with love watching and playing with his grandchildren. Thank you for being a great example of a man and thank you for being my dad. I love you and you'll be forever missed. Lovely tributes to your dad, Monique and Luke. We do have some other tributes, but I think at this time we may see visual memories of Derek while listening to some of his favourite music. Thank you. 
be soft You think you are The new kind of Jane Steen But the only thing I've ever seen Of you Was a commercial spot on the screen Movie star, oh movie star You think you are a movie Movie star, oh movie star
certainly hold so many memories. I'd now like to invite Derek's good friend Graham Weatherly to come forward to share with us his thoughts on Derek. We may put the mic right up here, Graham. I first met Derek in 2010 at the Burnie Tennis Club. Our friendship quickly developed and within six months he was a close and trusted mate of my wife Jan and I. In early 2012 we both found ourselves lost. He separated, I widowed and for a time we leaned heavily on each other for comfort and support and he never let me down. Over the years, Derek and I have had good fun and adventurous times. I'd like to share a few with you. In 2013, Derek joined me on the final Ballarat to Shepherd and Leg, legs of our Tour to Fight Back charity bike, bike ride, which was typical, Derek, thoughtful, encouraging, life-loving. Arriving in Bendigo for the, uh, for the night, two younger support crew members and some thirsty riders took Derek over to the local for a few beers. Hour and a half or so later, I spot him wobbling back over the, uh, the oval towards the club rooms we are staying in. Diggy says, those buggers can drink. A six pot shout and could they put them down? Well, I seem to be always sculling. He then proceeded to wear a big smile, that direct smile, and talk dribble for the next hour or so before he put himself off to bed. Two, our choice when single. After being rigged for plays of affection when out and about, uh, to selectively masquerade as a gay couple. <laughs> um, hugs, kisses on the forehead, play for, playful tickles, and suggestive amorous comments between us did create quite a few laughs and in some circles some eyebrow raising. Uh, Derek and I revelled in the theatre of it. Three trips together in Tassian on the mainland. Derek was a great travelling companion. During one on a tram in Melbourne at 12.30am, a young woman accompanied by some others repeatedly asked Derek for some money to the extent that over it he, he uh, retorted, actually, I'm a bit skint. How about you give me some money? Come on, give me some money. Come on. It did the trick. She retreated. And four, it's been mentioned, but Derek's favourite camping spot, uh, fishing spot, Stumpy's in Mount William National Park. The two of us, after a few beers and some green ginger wine around the campfire, fell in love with and embraced our dancing ladies, which were near, nearby shapely tea trees silhouetted in the moonlight. <laughs> and uh, it's been mentioned, but the next one, Derek and Siri. If we didn't know or were debating who, what, where or when, Derek would jump onto Siri and take pleasure in setting us straight. Derek loved to consult his Siri to confirm the facts or probably more so to prove us wrong. On occasion though, he did, uh, he did blaspheme at Siri when she couldn't understand him. <laughs> and uh, as we know, Derek was a doer, not a procrastinator. When his mum, Dawn, again used a ladder to trim the only tall shrub in her garden and the family was worried for her safety Derek acted and I was in his plan. 
Pulling up with a chainsaw in the jewel cab, Derek says, you keep mum occupied while I do the deed. To the back door I go, knock, knock, hello Dawn. In I go, yes, uh, Derek will be inside in a minute for a cuppa. Uh, yes, Dawn, good thanks, I'm going along. And then the chainsaw starts and fires up. That sounds close and it sounds like a chainsaw, says Dawn. Um, it does, and yes, it does, I say. It stops shortly after and Derek walks in. Hi, Mum. No need for a ladder in your garden anymore. For, for what Deek did for me and through his manner and approach with them, Derek became highly respected and admired by all of my family and many of my Victorian friends. I met Julie in 2014 and she says one of the best things about teaming up with me was meeting and becoming a close friend of Derek's. Many like me have been enriched by Derek's genuine, happy, giving and caring nature. A loyal, protective, hard-working, fun-loving, respectful, honest, generous, fair-minded, courageous, ripper bloke. Through the life he led, Derek leaves a legacy to all who knew him of positivity, strong moral fibre and wonderful memories to uplift and inspire, to cherish. Deek, you always be with me, us, here and here. Love you, Digger. Thank you, Graeme. We now have a time if any of you would like to come forward and share a memory or a story of Derek with us. I thought I was going to be all right, but those that come before me made it a bit sad and, uh, and that music collage didn't help either. Anyway, I'm Edward Quinn, or Derek called me Quinny, and that's how most people know me from Derek. I first met Derek almost 40 years ago at the Ridgely Footy Club. I'd started there in 83, and Derek came up the next year in 84. Derek ended up playing 154 games for the Ridgely Saints, played in some grand finals and at least one premiership. He was a tough uncompromising player. We were both in our 20s when we met, both born in 1960, both not long married, both loving sport, so of course we found a common interest in veggie gardens. <laughs> I wanted one, I didn't have one, and over a beer or, or two after training one night, Derek told me he could get some railway sleepers for garden borders. He was working as a fet on the Fettler crew for the EBR at the time. A week or so later, he turned up in one of the road rail vehicles with a crew of blokes and a full load of sleepers. He, he didn't muck around. Derek had a great sense of humour. I remember the first time I went to Derek and Bev's house in Thorn Street. I went with Derek, so I was in his car, and I asked if he had a dog. Dogs and me don't get on. They reckon dogs can smell fear, and that frightens me. <laughs> Derek said, yeah, we've got a dog, but it's friendly. That's what most people say, and I was still worried. As we pulled into the driveway, I asked Derek what the name was. I thought this will get the dog on my side. Derek looked at me and he said, the dog's name's Tripod. <laughs> I, I walked down the lane and I thought, that's a funny name for a dog, but I'll be brave. And I started calling, Tripod, Tripod. I saw all the neighbours heard me. I saw a dog peeking around the corner of the house and my fear intensified. I started slapping my thighs, Tripod, Tripod. This happy dog came bounce around the corner and it only had three legs. And I, I turned and looked back at Derek and he was almost in tears. <laughs> he, he bloody got me. He, he moved up the road to West Morville Road and had a bit of a property upgrade and a, and a house upgrade and he got an upgraded dog too because this one had four legs. <laughs> and, 
And Derek was telling me one day, I said, how's your dog going? He said, the dog, well, it's been playing up a bit. It's, it's gone run around down to the neighbours and um, stirring up the chickens. And the neighbour came over and the neighbour said to me, he said, Derek, he said, if that dog hurts or kills one of my chickens, I'm going to shoot it. I thought, oh, Jesus, bloke doesn't know who he's mucking around with. Said, Derek's going to smack him in the mouth, I think. And I was going through this one and I forgot. Oh, I said to Derek, what did you say? He said, don't worry, mate, I'll do the same thing. I thought, Jesus, that's, that's tough. Tough and fair, Derek was. And two things <laughs> didn't go quite his way. He had a bit of a temper. I've been told it's a Howard thing. <laughs> <laughs> we, w- <laughs> we went into the footy change rooms one day. Derek had played in a DFA representative game the week before. He'd played on the ball and he'd played well. We walk in, I'm walking next to him. He looks at the board. I put my bag down. He's still looking at the board. So aren't you getting changed? No, nah, fucking no. I said, what's the matter? He's clutching his I said, what's the matter? He said, I played, I played on the ball for the DFA last week and now I'm in the back pocket. I said, she's right, mate, just get changed. He's clutching the bag, cuts the bag. I didn't know what I didn't know what to do. Anyway, he strolls off over to the coaches next to the board. I've no idea what they said, but the coach gets his hand up, rubs Derek off the off the back pocket, puts him on the ball. <laughs> Derek walked back over the man. I just looked. I did. I'm very impressive, Derek. I thought I didn't. I didn't say anything. We we had a lot of fishing trips, and there's always drama. There was always something. I still got the oar stuck in the water. The bung was in the boat. The keys were locked in the car. This trip that I'm going to tell you about went wrong before we even left Bernie. We we're in the car with Luke, and Luke was only a little bloke, and we're driving along in front of the pulp, and Luke says, "Dad, what, mate? The trailer's on fire." <laughs> no, no, mate. The, the, the trailer wouldn't be fire, on fire, mate. Dad, what, mate? The, the trailer's on fire. He pulled over the side of the road. Something had broken on the trailer, and a, the the um, guard had dropped onto the onto the tire, and there was smoke pissing off the road. Oh, he's going to spit it. He's going to eat. No, he said, "We'll take it." It was Yanny Jensen's boat and trailer, so he took it out to Yanny's metalworks, and someone fixed it. We're on our way. I thought, good, good. This is this is this is okay now. We got to the lake, nothing went wrong, we got in the boat. We're going round to fish off the bottom and Luke says, Dad, yeah mate, can I throw a lure out while we go around the corner? <laughs> they said, yeah mate, yeah, but just make sure you put a swivel or an anti-king on, anti-king on so you don't get a tangle. Yeah, Dad. And Luke throws a line out and we part. It was a beautiful day. I thought, this is perfect, you know. Dad, yeah mate, well, I've got a bit of a tangle. We'd started winding it in, it hadn't been in five minutes. You're all right, mate, we'll fix it. He said, no, Dad, I've got a bit of a tangle. Derek turned around. Luke had been winding in and had gone like, there was a knot as big as your fist on the reel between the reel and the eye. <laughs> Derek, he said, fuck no. He said, get that fucking gear and chuck it in the fucking lake. I said, I said, hang on here a minute, Derek, some of that gear's mine. There's nothing wrong with my gear. And he, and he calmed down. He, he was fine. He calmed down that time. This, this time he didn't. We, we went to a cricket match in Devonport about 25 years ago. And we were standing under the grandstand to get in the shade and something came out of the crowd and bounced off Derek's shoulder and fell onto the ground. And he looked down and it was a chicken bone. He, he, he could have just kicked me deep in. He bent over, he picked it up and he turned around. <laughs> I thought, Jesus, don't hope nobody looks guilty. Don't, he stood there, we stood there for two hours. He had that chicken bone clutch in his hand. <laughs> Every 10 minutes he turned around looking at the crowd I thought, I hope no one's got a KFC box or a packet or bag or anything that looked like it had chicken in it because you would be going out. <laughs> when we went to go home, I took the chicken bone off him. You know, I kept it for about four or five years. I was going to bloody, I was going to bring it up at some occasion, but I, it was enough just to mention it to him. We went on a trip to New Zealand in 2001 and uh, we had a camper van and was going around the South Island and, the first day we thought, stuff it, we'll go over to Wellington. We got on the ferry, we went over to Wellington. But what are we going to do? The people talked about Google and Siri before. We didn't have that then. We didn't really know much about New Zealand. We just went there on a holiday. What do we do? We go to the museum. So we went to the museum and I was doing little tours and we joined up this tour. We had the headphones on and the girl was very nice and sweet and very friendly and talking, talking in the cute New Zealand accent. We walked around and then it was fine until she started, I've got nothing against Maoris. <laughs> She, she started using Maori words and they sound a lot like swear words. She said it once, she said to fuck a papa. And Derek and I, <laughs> looking at each other, 
like little kids sniggering. And it's not our fault, but a minute later, she said it again, but added another word which made it even funnier. So we're, we're standing there like six-year-olds, and the, the, the New Zealand sweetness went straight out of her. We had to behave ourselves to get through the tour without getting ejected. And then we ended up going to a pub that day. It was, uh, it was great. It, we thought, the Irish pub, it's St Patrick's Day, we're in New Zealand, we went to the pub, it was full of Russians. I, I, it w you wouldn't think it happened. Two hours later there, we were drunk. Three Australian blokes, my brother was there, three Australian blokes in an Irish pub on St Patrick's Day in New Zealand, Cossack dancing all around the floor. <laughs> <laughs> and just one more quick story about the New Zealand trip. Um, we lost my brother, we didn't leave him, he went home. Uh, down in Queenstown, and Derek, I, Derek and I continued on our way up. And we stayed in Timaru, it was, I think it was our second last night, and we went out into the town, we were having a few drinks, and uh, the, the, there was a group of people that had come in for a cattle sale, and they were all big farmers, and one of them was about 18 or 19, and we got on well with all of them, but this 18 or 9 year old was hanging around, and he started saying how he wasn't really interested in farming, he, he wanted to be a rugby player, and he, he, was, he just kept going and going and going. I thought, hang on in a minute, I can brag too. I said, this bloke here, this Derek Howard, he is undefeated in Australia in Indian arm wrestling. And, <laughs> and Derek, Derek standing behind me, shaking his head, which, which often when we went out and had beers, that's usually what happened. <laughs> I, said, I said, and, and in my defence, I'd seen Derek Indian arm wrestling in Bernie in my house, in Bernie in his house in pubs in Burnie and Burnie's in Australia when I last looked so I, I stuck to my guns. Derek refused the Indian arm wrestle with him and I don't know whether it was a 14 or 15 years later or well, the fact that the bloke, the, this young bloke had been bragging that much that Derek finally admitted to having, uh, or that, he, that said he'd have a, an Indian arm wrestle with him. It was the best out of three. Derek beat him two times first up and I wasn't one bit smug about it. I just said to the young bloke and now he's undefeated in two countries. <laughs> So, I saw Derek last week, but I, I hadn't seen him for a while. So I moved to Queensland in 2007. I haven't seen him a lot, but we keep in touch. About seven months ago, Derek rang me. He'd seen something I'd posted on Facebook and it had resonated with him. And after talking for a while, Derek mentioned that he'd, his health hasn't been good and he was having trouble with his kidneys. And we were talking about that, and then Derek said, No, 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 it's not about me anyway. I wanted to see how you were going. And that, that, that's what he was like. He said we should have another trip to Stumpy's Bay. We're looking forward to that. You go through life thinking there'll always be another catch up, and always another trip to the cricket, always another fishing trip. You, can't, you just can't take anything for granted. And life, well, we had a saying with each other, well, you, know, life is, you know, things can be hard but fair. It was hard for Derek, but it wasn't fair. It, it's tough to sum up 40 years of friendship in a few minutes and monologue, but we had some awesome times. Our family were close. My wife and kids loved Derek. I think half the time my kids loved Derek more than they loved me. <laughs> the daughter Diana even has the same, even has the same birthday. Derek, Howard, you'll be sadly missed but never forgotten, mate. Thanks, Dave. Thank you, Quinny. I'm not sure what your first name is, but all the family told me you were Quinny. Yes. Would anybody else like to come forward to share with us? Yes, yes. Andrea. <sighs> Hi, I am Andrea, Derek's sister. Um, and this is tough. <laughs> um, we've always known that we've had a really close family but with Derek passing we've just I just know just how close we are and we're very very lucky we're very blessed um, and in the last five years because I've moved back to Tassie David would my husband would be away at work for a month and Derek was alone so him and I hooked up a fair bit and went out different things and got to have a extra special time so I'm glad that I got this last five years with him um, and in the last couple of weeks, I was alone with him at home till everyone could get home. And so I said to him, when you pass, I'd like to read a poem out. So I went through a few and I told, um, said, this is one I, that resonates with me, would you like? And he goes, yes, yes, I'd like that. So I'm going to read a poem that I read to him. 
So in memory of a special brother, today is full of memories of a brother laid to rest and every single one of them is filled with happiness. For you were someone special, always such a joy to know, and when there was so much pain, and there was so much pain when it was time for to let you go. That's why this spe special message is sent to heaven above, for the angels to take care of you and give you all our love. And then while I was reading that, I've come across another one and I showed it to him. He goes, yeah, I'd like it if you'd read this to, for me. So this is from Derek to all of you. As I sit in heaven. As I sit in heaven and watch you every day, I tried to let you know with signs I never went away. I hear you when you're laughing and watch you as you sleep. I even place my arms around you to calm you as you weep. I see you wish the days away, begging to have me home. So I try to send you signs so you know that you're not alone. Don't feel guilty that you have life that was denied to me. Heaven is truly beautiful, just you wait and see. So live your life, laugh again, enjoy yourself, be free. Then I know with every breath you take, you'll be taking one for me. Thank you, Andrea. Today we've had the opportunity of hearing about Derek's life, yet each person here no doubt would have their own stories and memories to tell. So that's why getting together after the service is so important. So with this in mind, the family warmly invite you to join them here at Parkside and then later at the Burnie Tennis Club at, at 5pm? At the Burnie, at, After 5pm at the Burnie Tennis Club. Again, on behalf of those who love Derek, I offer their most heartfelt thanks for your presence here today and for the love and the support that you have given them. To the people who went out of their way in the last few weeks to support Derek and his family, to name each person and what they did would take way too long. But you know who you are and what you did, but probably what you don't know is how much every act of kindness meant to Derek and his family. As we come near the end of the service and that we think about Derek and the stories and the conversations that we've shared about him, he has lived and his living has touched us in all different ways. May you remember Derek for the good things that he did and the times he sh that you shared with him and for the man that he was. We pay tribute and give thanks to Derek's life. We thank him for his fun-loving, quick-witted sense of humour and his friendship and his loyalty, his kindness, generosity, his courage, independence and determination. But mostly, we thank him for his love and his care. We now have a time in the service where I invite the family to come forward to say their own personal goodbye to Derek. And as Derek loved his garden, garden they're going to place peas, Derek's peas, on his
Could we please be seated? Sadly, it's come time to say our final goodbye, and I know I asked you to be seated, but could you please stand if you are able? We commit the body of Derek Royce Howard to the purifying elements and ultimately to Mother Earth from which all things come and to which all things in life return. We take comfort in knowing that he goes to be with loved ones that have gone before him. If we could reach up and hold a star for every time he's made us smile, the entire sky would be in the palm of our hands. May you go on your journey, Derek, with great love and respect. We bid you farewell. As we leave here today, may you find strength and support in your love for one another, remembering that things end, but memories last forever. <laughs>